Good day. This is Dr. Conrad Miller with your Fukushima update for June 17, 2013, Volume 5 of the summations we're giving you from the New York City Fukushima Disaster Symposium. We'll start off today with the low-dose ionizing radiation risks from David Brenner from Columbia University. Basically, he said the risks are cardiac, teratogenic, which means cancer, and hereditary effects on the DNA and so on. He noted that 40% of any study population will get cancer anyway. Uh, I imagine that includes also skin cancer. He noted that of the studies done on the Hiroshima victims in Japan after the atomic bomb, they had 81 extra cancers of the people studied 2,000 to 3,000 yards away from ground zero. His main point was that no dose is zero risk from radiation. Then we had Alexei Yablokov come from Russia, from the Russian Academy of Medicine in Moscow. He is the man who studied all those papers that were not written in English or Russian, 5,000 of them, and found many things, mainly that about a million people died prematurely from the Chernobyl accident of 1986 so far. And also that the life expectancy has dropped from the mid-70s to around 57 to 58 now in Russia. He noted that there was total secrecy and falsification of the uh, medical statistics after Chernobyl for the first three and a half years. He noted that 60% of the radionuclides that were ejected from the plant during the graphite fire and steam explosion were deposited outside the Soviet Union. And he noted a high incidence of miscarriage after Chernobyl, about 100,000 extra incidents uh, it increased immediately after 1986 and then started to decrease thereafter. The officials blamed radiation phobia for morbidity. And he notes that from radiation, we'll hear about that in the next study, uh, there are effects on the brain and the brain sometimes is smaller than it should be, and that seems to correlate with intelligence, too. But we'll go more into that when the doc Dr. Wartelecki lecture. Um, and also a lot of congenital malformations were noted. He also stated that about 20% of the children are healthy in irradiated zones around Chernobyl of more than one Curie per square kilometer. Then we went to Dr. Vladimir Wurtelecki, and he spoke about congenital malformations around the Rivne, R-I-V-N-E, Pelosia area after the Chernobyl accident. That's an area just to the west of Chernobyl. Uh, in the Ukraine. They had a monitoring program going on. The WHO, the World Health Organization, estimates that 12 to 25 millisieverts per year for the first year occurred, and infant girls were exposed to this radiation, and they faced a 70% higher risk of developing thyroid cancer, a 6% higher risk of developing breast cancer from low-dose radiation. And you know that you also have to account for alcohol in the Ukraine for fetal problems. Um, he said that mainly uh, in the beta emitters like cesium, which is also a gamma emitter, and other radionuclides were mainly inhaled or swallowed. He said that the International Atomic Energy Association statement was not true, 
about no damage to newborn babies, miscarriages, etc. They started a child registry in 2000 of every child born and every child examined in the area. Now, police, uh, that area, there's three, actually three counties or provinces there, and they are south of the river Pripyat, and it was noted that they had increase in neural tube def def defects, cleft lip, anencephaly, which means no brain or small brain, microcephaly, and well, eyes, microphthalmia they had. And he noted that that area is like Louisiana. Uh, it could be inbreeding. The northern half of the province is geologically different to the other parts of the Ukraine. There's no clay or binders in the soil. And the radiate, when the, in the area where the radiation fell, it was transferred to trees. And the concentration in grass is much higher than in the area right next to Chernobyl. So he said that this is the most contaminated region in the Ukraine, and Chernobyl's in the Ukraine, northern Ukraine. So the northern three counties of, of Polisia are the most isolated uh, areas of the Ukraine. They have seasonal flooding like Louisiana, so the radiation can move. Uh, it's a population isolate, an economic isolate. They have the highest index of transfer from the soil to the plants of cesium-137. Then they use the trees to make houses and to heat their stoves and heat their houses. They have no place to buy food in a lot of the areas, so they have to eat and grow what they have around them. So that also is a high transfer index of the cesium into the food or into their um, environment. And they're finding these increased neural tube defects like spina bifida and so on in the encephaly. And there are many of them besides that. But the neural tube defect develops as the fetus starts to develop. And it does, the neural tube doesn't close, which includes the spinal cord and the brain and so on. And so that's where they get these defects. And it's the highest in Europe. Uh, when they tried to detect the alcohol fetal syndrome to see if that was possibly causing it, but actually the women there drank less during the studies that they did. He said that averaging doesn't tell anything for a mother or a child with congenital malformations. Now, the people there cook with the wood, 52% of the people they studied cook with wood, and 77% of them heat their house with wood. So they use the ashes from the wood in the garden, so they're concentrating it more and more, uh, the radiation especially. And he said that the numbers now are higher for neural tube defects and other radiation effects than they were 15 years ago because of bioconcentration, and it takes time for bioconcentration. He also knows that the women burn dried potato stems and eat potato pancakes, and these also carry the radiation. And he said that we measure cesium, but we ignore strontium, strontium-90, which the body absorbs into the bone, recognizes as a calcium. The cesium we can get rid of, but the strontium stays forever. It stays in the bone, the bone marrow, the teeth, the dentin. And he said it stays with the child until he dies, exactly where it's deposited. And it probably comes from eating the potato stems, amongst other things. Whole body counts of cesium were taken, and it was found that 48% of pregnant women in the distant portions of Policia, more isolated portions, 48% had higher than normal body counts compared to kids, 12%, adult males, 6.4%. If you went out of Policia, the levels were 0.1% in pregnant women and practically zero in the kids and the adult males. Another prominent finding in Policia was microcephaly or small brain where the head size is measured and it's more than three standard deviations below normal. While the birth weights of these kids were normal. And that's microcephaly or small brain. It's a known radiation effect on the nervous system. Now around Hanford in, in uh, Washington, where they have all the nuclear waste, they also found neural tube 
defects, which would be in my environmentally produced. They were found in a 1988 study. So they repeated the study, and they found the same thing, but they dismissed it because it conflicted with the Hiroshima and Nagasaki observations, which Dr. Wing talked about, which I'll talk about later. So it was dismissed twice and they, when they were finding neural tube defects there. Then it's around Sellafield in the UK, where they have a reprocessing plant. They also found statistically elevated rates of stillbirths and neural tube defects in 1999 at Parker et al. study, but no follow-up was done because there were lawsuits about leukemia around Sellafield, and the environment was very tense. Um, then he showed a map of where the plume went from Chernobyl, and basically went across Europe and it kind of corkscrewed over the United Kingdom and then went up into Scandinavia. So they're finding higher neural tube defects in the UK, in Wales, it's lower in Norway. Policia levels are about 25.96 of neural tube def defects in a study. We'll just give you the general numbers. Wales was 13.6 and Norway was 14.47 to 10.002. Again, Pelosia was 25.96. So there's a question of mental illness related to microcephaly or, or retardation or lower intelligence. It's happening in Norway and Sweden since Chernobyl. So they have to do another study to see about cause and effect relative to that. He notes that uh, perhaps the fetus is much more sensitive to radiation than we used to think. And or the doses that were received were higher than documented or estimated relative, for example, to these children. Congenital malformations are caused by multiple factors that cause damage, and then you have difficulty also repairing the damage. So he prefers prevention before epidemiology, or study of what's going on in an area. They also know now that uh, 400 micrograms per day of folic acid can help prevent neural tube damage, but not from massive doses of radiation. And they want to do a defined study with a proper uh, population, but they would have difficulty at Fukushima at this point because most of the people have left, especially around the uh, area right around the plant. So that can't be done anymore. He also noted that in the Ukraine, you can have an abortion, it's legal, and you can also just leave your baby at the hospital if you don't want to take it home, because everybody is scared of the birth defects of the children, and they, they don't know if they can take care of the kids. He also noted that pregnant women in Pelosi and the Ukraine consumed excess amounts of cesium in milk. Milk is a source of cesium, and also of strontium. Basically, we'll stop there. This is Dr. Conrad Miller with your Fukushima update, part five. And then this is the third part, actually, of the Fukushima update for June 17th, 2013. We'll see you next time with the last two uh, volumes of the summaries of the Fukushima Symposium in New York City, March 11th, March 12th, 2013. Thank you.